This teaching you're about to listen to was preached by Jagedis Sunday E and recorded live at God's Family Bible Church, Trinidad. Jagedis Sunday E is the general coordinator of Arabs of Revival Ministries and the School of Discipleship. He is also the missionary pastor of GFBC Trinidad under the leadership of Pastor Abology Akimbo, the general overseer of God's Family Bible Church Worldwide, Palm Coast, Florida. Listen and be transformed. We thank you. Bless your word in every heart, Father. Let your word prosper. Let it accomplish your intention, Father. And in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Now this night, very briefly before we pray, uh, I, I strongly believe the Lord is telling you to get out of your box. Get out of your box. Get out, get out, get out, get out of it. Alright? Now you see, there are many people uh, living today in various kind of boxes, cage. A prison that is constructed maybe by people for them or the one they constructed for themselves. Are you listening to what I'm talking about? So you see people that move about uh, physically, they are active, they seem to be free, you are not seeing them in ankles or in chains or in any kind of theater. But in their mind, are you listening to me? They are caged, they are restrained, they are restrained. There are many potentials and ability that are already caged in a box. There are songs to be sung, books to be written. There are innovation, great ideas, things that is going to bless the church, the body of Christ, the kingdom of God, that is going to bless humanity. But you know something? They have no good because they are still in a box. Are you listening to what I'm talking about? It doesn't matter how precious, how useful, how great a gift or a present that is given to you is, as long as it remains in a box, it has no purpose. Is that right? Come on, talk to me. Yeah. It's it, it have no purpose. So it doesn't matter how loaded you are, the potential, the vision, the dream, the ideas, and all those things that God has given to you, as long as they remain in the box inside of you, they have no purpose. Are you listening to what I'm talking about? Yeah. Hallelujah. And that is why today, one of the things we're going to do is to unbox them. Do you understand what I'm talking about? We're going to get rid of those boxes. We're going to remove all the limitations. Are you listening to what I'm talking about? Glory. Hallelujah. So today, we are dealing with mental boxes, things that restrain us in our mind, in our mind. Now listen to me. Now being born again is actually being born into the realm of li limitless possibilities. When we are born again, it is much more than having your sin forgiven and having a hope that when you die, you go to heaven and you see Jesus. No, it is greater than that. It is you being called into the realm where there is nothing that is impossible. Look at what Jesus said, John chapter 3 verse 8, during his, his discourse with Nicodemus. Uh, John chapter 3 verse 8, quickly, let's, let's focus on verse 8. Now look at what Jesus liking, I wanted to see the analogy, I wanted to see how Jesus liking one who is born of the Spirit, alright? Now verse 8 say, the wind blow where it wishes. Is that true? The wind blow wherever it wants. You can't contain it. You can't, you can't restrain it. You can't give it direction. Is that right? Yeah. Okay. Now, so look at what Jesus has said. And you hear the sound of it, but you cannot tell where it come from and where it go. Look at the last phrase. So is what? Everyone who is born of the Spirit. Do we have those who are born of the Spirit in the house? Yeah. So Jesus said you are what? Like the wind. It blows wherever it wishes. Wherever it desire, wherever it want. I love the way easy, uh, version put it. Look at how easy put it. John 3 verse 8. When someone is born by God's spirit, it is like the wind that blows. When someone is born by God's spirit, it is what? Like the wind that blows. The wind blows where it wants. No restraint, no restraint. So if you are truly born of the Spirit, now you are born into the realm where there is what? There is no restraint. There is nothing. Are you listening to what I'm talking about? Are you with me this night? You know what Jesus told that man that brought his little boy that has a mood spirit, deaf and dumb spirit, and the disciple could not cast it out. And the man began to beg Jesus and say, if you can do something to help, please help. Look at what Jesus told him, verse 23, uh, Mark chapter 9, verse 23. Jesus said to him, if you can believe what, all things are possible to him who what, who believes. Do we have those who believe in the house? Let someone say, I am a believer. All things are possible to me. 
That is the realm that you are born again into. Nothing stops you until what you allow in your mind. Somebody listen to what I'm talking about. There is no force, there's no power anywhere that can stop you unless you are stopped in your mind, caged in your mind, restrained and contained in your mind. Now, God's word translation, the same Mark 9 23. I love the way this translation put it. Jesus said to him, as far as possibilities go, everything is possible for who? The person who believe. As far as what possibility go, everything is possible. Are you listening to what I'm talking about? And you know, Jesus is talking about those who believe. Are you the one that believes? Yes. I said, are you the one that believes? Yes. So the Bible says, how many things are possible to you? Everything. 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 That is important. Do you know why? Because we are full of power by the Spirit of God. Micah 3 verse 8, because we are full of the fullness of God. I wanted to see the book of Ephesians chapter 1. Now it is impossible to understand this. Hallelujah. That there is nothing that is allowed to stop you. Ha, hallelujah. Ephesians 1, 19 and 20. Amplified classic edition. Now look at what the Bible says. And so that you can know and understand. What are we to know and understand? What is what? The immeasurable and unlimited and what? Surpassing. So we have within us immeasurable. Something that cannot be measured. Unlimited. Nothing can limit it. And it is what? Surpassing greatness of his power. That is of God's power. Where is that power? In and for us who believe. So, be loaded with such power. What is it that you cannot achieve? No. There is, that's why Jesus said, as far as possibility goes, everything is possible to him who believe. Do you know why? Because you now have inside of you, by the reason of the Spirit of God dwelling in you, immeasurable power of God. You have what? Unlimited power of God. You have the power of God that surpasses anything whatsoever that you can ever think of. And that power is inside of all. Are you listening to what I'm talking about? Hallelujah. But you see something. Now pay attention to this. Now, you will be stopped you'll be restrained, you'll not be able to, to, to attain your highest potential if you allow any box in your mind. What are these boxes that we talk about? Because I want us to pray about them, I want us to deal with them, but I want you to have an understanding of what we are dealing with, alright? Because you are getting out of that box tonight. Now, when we talk of the box, we are talking of the mental limitation that has been imposed on you or the one that you have imposed. Oh, I cannot do this. This is hard. This is impossible. I cannot attain this. I cannot achieve this. This is not for me. I'm not good enough for this. Now, that is what a box constructed in your mind. That is a mental limitation. Are you listening to what? Spiritually speaking, in Christ, now there is, there is, there is nothing you cannot achieve. If you believe, all things are possible. He that is born of the Spirit is like a wind. He cannot be stopped. He can blow wherever it wants. But listen to me. Once you have constructed a, a limitation in your mind and say, this is what I cannot do, then you cannot do it. Now listen to me. That does not mean you don't have the potential to do it, but you have already imposed a limitation. You have set a boundary already. And so now you are getting rid of that. Is somebody listening to what I'm talking about? Are you listening to what I'm talking about? Now, so a, a box represents mental limitation. It speaks of negative mindset. It speaks of negative pictures and imagination in our mind. Maybe as we are growing up because of things that people have said. Maybe your parent, maybe your, your, your husband, your wife, your ex. And all those things they have said, it has now formed a picture of limitation in your mind. And then you have this negative mindset. Oh, oh the reason why I'm not married is because I'm not beautiful. Nobody desires me. Now, that is a box in your mind. Are you listening to what I'm talking about? Maybe you grew up in a family where no one really succeeded in doing anything. And then you, you, you grow up with that picture in your mind. Are you listening to what? Now that is a box. That is a ball. That is what is holding you back. In Christ, there is nothing that you cannot achieve. You are like a wind. You can blow wherever you want. Are you listening to me? You can go to any length you want in Christ. Is someone listening to what I'm talking about? But you need to get rid of those negative pictures. Pictures that words of men have created, have painted in your mind. Tonight, you know what? You need to get rid of it. Are you listening to what I'm talking about? Now, you see, a mental box also represents the natural and carnal thinking. 
Now, thinking as one that is without Christ. Are you listening to what I'm talking about? Oh, oh, uh, uh, someone is sick and they say, oh, this one is incurable, all right? And then you think like that. Oh, I have something that is incurable. What is wrong with you? Are you listening to what? No, that's not the way Christ will think. Are you listening to what I'm talking about? So we need to get rid of that natural way of thinking. Do you know why? Because we have the fullness of Christ in all. We have God's immeasurable power. There is no sickness it cannot cure. Is somebody listening to what I'm talking about? So they may call it incurable. You don't think like that. You don't think like that. Because if you think like that, then you limit the surpassing greatness of God's power within you. It is not the devil. It is you doing it. And you are doing it in your mind. In your mind. So when we talk of mental boss, we are talking of strong goals that have been built in your mind. It may be strong goals of lack, failure, poverty, low self-esteem. These are the bosses that hold people. These are the bosses that hold down potentials and dreams and vision that God has given to all. And you know what? In these 14 days, fasting and prayer, we need to get rid of them. Is somebody listening to me? We need to put down all those boxes because it is time for our destiny to explode. It is time for the dreams and the vision that God has put in our heart to become realities. Yeah. Are you listening to what I'm talking about? Yeah. When we talk of mental boss, we are talking of wrong estimation of yourself. Many of us, the way we ask, when we look at ourselves, we are not really seeing who we are. Are you listening to what I'm talking about? As he is, first John 4, 17, so are you now in this world. It's not, so when I look at Christ, when I behold the glory of Christ, that is my glory. That is who I am. I'm a new creation in Christ. But many of us, now that we are in Christ, we still evaluate and assess and judge ourselves as though we are not in Christ. No, things have changed. Are you listening to what I'm talking about? Now listen to me. Being born again is not becoming a better person. Are, are you with me? Yeah. Do, do you understand what I'm talking about? Being born again is not becoming uh, someone that is not a little better. No, it is becoming what? A new person entirely. Yeah. If anyone's in, in Christ is what? A new creation. That one new here is the Greek word kainos. It means unprecedented, unparalleled, something you have never seen before. And the Bible says it is like Christ. It is the spirit of Christ that is in us. He who is joined to the Lord is one spirit with him. First Corinthians 6, 17. So we need to get rid of those wrong, low self-evaluation of ourselves. No. Now, if you see Christ, that is who you are. That is the potential that you are. Are you listening to what I'm talking about? Now, so we need to get rid of that boss. When we talk of mental boss, we are talking of fear. Fears of any kind. It may be fear of sickness, fear of death. Oh, everyone in my family has this kind of sickness. No, you are a new person in Christ. Are you listening to what I'm talking about? Now, you have a power that is greater than that sickness and disease. Are you with me? Now, so you need to get rid of that fear. You need to get rid of that fear of failure. Many of us have not been able to step out. Even though we have clear vision, clear dream, we know exactly what God is calling us to do, but fear of failure in our mind. In our mind. It's not the devil doing it, it is in your mind. What if I fail? What if it is not God that said it? Have you tried it first? So we need to get rid of that. And that is what we are dealing with. Now, you know what we call mental boss? These are the lies that people have told you about yourself. Lies that you have told yourself that you have believed over the years. Many of us have told ourselves so many lies. And you know what? We have believed them. And you know what those lies are doing? They have created a box in our mind. And those box hold down our potentials. They hold down our dreams and our vision. And they will not allow us to, to, to be just like we that we are truly in Christ Jesus. Do you understand what I'm talking about? And do you know what you are going to do to those bosses? You are pulling them down. You are getting out of them. What does it mean to get out of the boss? It means getting rid of every limitation, every bandit in your mind. Are you listening to what I'm talking about? Yeah. Telling yourself that in Christ, there is nothing I cannot achieve. Are you with me? Yeah. It doesn't matter how many people say it is not possible, but you know who you are in car. I have surpassing greatness of God's power to him who believes all things are possible. It is possible. I'm going to do it. So you need to get rid of that limitation in your mind. You need to develop positive mindset and mentality. That is what it means to get out of your boss. You need to start thinking supernaturally. What does that mean? You think just like her. In every situation, you don't think like natural men. People who are without God's spirit, you think like who? Like Jesus. That's what it means. 
Supernaturally, it means you start pulling down those strongholds in your mind. Now, getting out of your boss means you cast down every negative imagination, every picture in your mind. Are you listening to what I'm talking about? You need to do what? Cast them down. Destroy them. You need a new picture in your mind. You need to bring every thought of impossibility into party. That's what it means to get out of the boss. That's what it means to get rid of the boss. It means you need to start having a correct estimation of yourself in class. You need to start believing who God says you are in his word, in his word. If somebody listen to what I'm talking about, you need to stop calling yourself, addressing yourself as a victim. No, you are a victor in Christ. Whatever is born of God, overcome it. You need to look at yourself in the mirror and say, this is who I am. I'm an overcomer. I may have challenges and trouble. I may be down, but you know what? I've got the victory already. I'm going to rise up again. I'm going to fight again. I'm going to put on the whole armor of God. So you need to change the way you see yourself. It means rejecting every lie that you have been told before. That includes what the doctor says also. Do you understand what I'm talking about? That is not for me. That I know what God has said and I'm sticking with that. Is somebody listening to what I'm talking about? That is what it means to get out of the boss. It means stepping out in faith to attain your highest potentials in Christ. Are you listening? Don't be comfortable with what you have achieved. There is still much more. There is still much more. He who is born of the spirit is like a wind. It's like a wind. Don't limit yourself in Christ. There is no limitation imposed on you in Christ. You can blow wherever you want. You can go as far as you desire. You can achieve as much as you want in life. Is somebody listening to what I'm talking about? So you know what? That is what it means to get out of the bus. You need to start confronting and overcoming all your fears in life. You need to pursue your purple dreams and goals in life without any reservation or restraint. Somebody listen to what I'm talking about. You need to step out and, and just go after it as though that is nothing called failure. Is somebody listening to what I'm talking about? That is just go as though that is success in all that is available to you. Your only option. That is what it means to get out of the boss. How do I get out of that mental boss? Let's quickly look at that and then we we'll rise up to pray. Now Genesis chapter 15, we're going to look at Abraham, uh, the father of faith. And quickly we'll look at three or four things and then we we'll rise up uh, to pray. Glory, hallelujah. Heaven tell somebody, say, get out of that boss tonight. Get out of that boss tonight. Say, pull down that box tonight. Pull down that box tonight. Pull that box down tonight. Genesis chapter 15. Quickly, I read 1 to 6. Uh, because of time, I'm going to uh, speed up Genesis chapter 15. Now, the Bible says, after these things, all right, after uh, Abraham just rescued his nephew Lot, all right, now the Bible said the word of the Lord came to Abraham in a vision, saying, Do not be afraid, Abraham, I am your shield and your exceedingly great reward. Can you imagine God the Almighty coming down to a man in a vision and say, You know what? I'm your exceeding great reward. I am your shield. I am with you. All right. But look at Abraham's response. So Abraham in verse 2 said, Lord, what will you give me? See, I go childless. Are you listening? Now, so you could see the picture in Abraham's mind. I am going childless. All right. I am barren. My wife is barren. We are having no child. And he said, Lord, can you see? So Abraham is trying to bring God to see the same ugly, terrible, negative picture that he was seeing in his mind. He said, God, I want you to see what I'm seeing. God said, no, no, no. All right. Men of all, that's what we, when we pray, that's what we're asking God to do. That is not what God wanted to see. All right. So he said, I'm going childless. And the hear of my house is Eliezer of Damascus. Look at verse 3. As though God didn't hear what he said initially. So Abraham repeated and said, Then Abraham said, Look, you have given me no offspring. Indeed, one who is born in my house is my here. Now there is a culture in those days that if you are rich, you have estate, and then you don't have any child. So your, your most faithful servant becomes the heir of all that you have when you die. All right. Now so Abraham has already said that in his mind. And that is why he was telling God as though God should endorse it. So God, I'm going childless. I have no offspring. And according to the culture, Eliezer, the most faithful servant, is the heir of all that I have. Are you listening to what I'm talking about? Now, I wanted to see that limitation he already imposed in his mind. He already said, now, and you know, before this time, God has promised. Uh, all right, God has promised to give him a child. But Abraham, in his mind, said, I am going childless. Eliasa is going to be the heir of all that I have. But look at how God helped him out. We're going to lend that and then we rise up to pray. Then verse 4 now. 
And behold, the word of the Lord came to him. So God spoke, saying, this one shall not be your ear. Eliezer is not your, don't settle for that. That's what God is saying. What I have for you is far better than this one. Eliezer is not the ear, but one who will what? Come from your body shall be your ear. God is saying, why will you settle for that? Don't settle for that. Now go for the best that I have for you. That's what God is saying to us. Many of us have settled for that. Well, anyway, if, if, uh, if only this one can go, I can still manage this ailment. I can still, man no, why do you want to manage any sickness or disease? Why not get rid of everything? Are you listening to what I'm talking about? Now, that's what God is saying to Abraham. Abraham, why will you settle for Eliezer? No, this one shall not be your ear. No, this is not the best I could do. I can do much more than this, Abraham. That's what God was telling Abraham. And that's what God is saying to him. Who told you that what you have got is all that God can give you? Is somebody listening to what I'm talking about? Who told you you have reached the end of your potential? You are just starting. Is somebody listening to me? Oh, pastor, you don't know. I have retired. Who told you that being retired means your heart of God's plan and destiny for your life? How many of you know that Moses started his ministry at the age of 80? Do you understand what I'm talking about? So being retired does not mean uh, that is the end. No, it may just be the starting. You are just stepping into the real destiny that God has for your life. And look at what God did for him. Verse 5 and 6. And then we, we pray. Then God brought him outside and said, Look now towards what? Towards heaven. Abraham, you have been looking towards the people around you and the culture. It is time to raise your head. It is time to look to the sky. Look towards the heaven and count the stars. If you are able to number them, God was giving him what? A new picture. Somebody listen to me. God was giving him a new mindset. All right? You are not, what you have seen before was a picture of barrenness. Someone that is going talent. God said, no, look forward. Look upward to the heaven. Can you see the stars of heaven? So shall your descendant be. Do you know what God is doing? God is destroying, removing that whole picture. And God is painting a new picture in the mind of Abraham. That is how God helps him. And look at what, what God did. I love this. And God said to him, so shall your descendant be. And verse 6, I love Abraham's response. And Abraham did what? He believed in the Lord. And he counted, I counted to it for righteousness. Quickly, let's see how to practically get out of the bus as we pray. Number one, you see that the word of the Lord came to Abraham in verse 4. Now, you see... You will not get out of the box in your mind. You will not pull down that box if you don't expose your mind to the word of God. That's why it is so vital for you to come regularly to hear the word, listen to the word of God while you are driving. Are you listening to what I'm talking about? While you are busy doing your house chores, keep letting the word of God play. Open the Bible. Schedule time to read the word of God. Do you know what it does? The word of God is like hammer. If you begin to pull down those strong goals in your mind. The word of the Lord begins, it's, the Bible says it's like fire. Fire. Jeremiah 23 verse 29 it begins to consume all those negative seeds that have been sown into your mind. The word of God is like water it, it washes your mind, it will cleanse your mind. Jesus says sanctify them by your truth, make them clean purify them by your truth for your word is true. So if you want to get out of the bus, what do you do? Expose your mind to the word of God you need to confront your mind with what? The truth of what God has said my sickness is not unto death the doctor say it is leading to death but what of God say, John 11 verse 4 this sickness is what? It's not unto death. You know what I'm doing? I'm pulling down that box of illness in my mind. I'm getting a new picture. So it is the word of the Lord that paints pictures in our mind. It is what men say to us that, that form the basis of our imagination. Somebody listen to what I'm talking about? Now when someone speaks to you after a time, you see much more than what that person says, you begin to read meaning to you. You begin to form pictures in your mind. So words actually form basis of our picture and our imagination. The same way the word of God will do. So you want a new imagination, a new picture, then expose your mind to the word of God. Don't ever be tired of that. If listen to what I'm talking about. Number two, you see what God did to Abraham. The Bible says verse 5, God brought him outside. Now, when you see that word, bro, you would think like God carried him. No, God didn't carry him. God actually led him outside. Are you listening to what I'm talking about? He said to read version, put it in a better way. Then God led Abraham outside. 
So if I want to uh, get out of the bus, I need to do what? Follow the leading of God. Is somebody understand what I'm talking about? Number one, the word of God. Number two, you need to yield to the leading of the spirit. All right? God is not going to uh, encroach upon your will and force you to do something. No, you've got to respond. And you listen to me. As the spirit of the Lord is nudging you and putting something in your heart, you need to do what? Respond to it. Respond to it. That's what Abraham did. God led him and God said, Abraham, get out of that horse. Get out of that tent. You are not seeing rightly. You are not seeing correctly. And Abraham followed the Lord. If somebody listen to what I'm talking about, Psalm 32, 8 and 9, I will instruct you and teach you in the way you should go. That's God's promise. I will guide you with my eye. Verse 9 says, but do not be like the horse or like the mule, which have no understanding, which must be honest with beat and bridle. Hence, they will not come near you. You know what they do to us? They force them. God said, no, I don't do that. So what do you do? God said, I will guide you, but you do what? Respond and follow me. Quickly, let's look at what uh, God did also for Abraham. God pointed Abraham heavenward. God showed him the stars. In other words, God has him changed the picture. So, if I'm going to get out of the boat, what do I need to do? I need to start building, developing a new picture, a new positive mindset. Did somebody listen to what I'm talking about? Now, now you are trusting God for healing, alright? While you're on your sick bed, you need to imagine yourself healing. You need to imagine yourself returning to your world. You need to imagine yourself being pain-free. Did somebody listen to what I'm talking about? Now, your imagination must go uh, into active. You must activate it. Now, take the word of God and pay. Don't keep seeing the picture of someone that is sick and everybody has to feed you and attend to you. No friend, that's not the way to, to get healing or to get healed. So you need to change the picture. And that is why God showed Abraham the stars of heaven. Alright? And so rather than saying, I am going childless, what will Abraham be saying? My children are what? Like the stars of the heaven. That's a new picture. That's a new mindset. And that is what we need to develop. And the last thing, then you need to believe. The Bible says, and Abraham believed in the law. So you need to believe what God says about you. You need to believe that you are an overcomer. You are victor. Your sickness is not unto death. And you listen to what I'm talking about. You need to believe that there are potentials in you and you are going to attain them. I want you to rise to your feet. I want you to rise to your feet. I want you to know that in Christ you are too loaded. You are too big. You are too great. You are too powerful to live in any box. Is somebody listen to me. Let somebody shout in Christ Jesus. Christ of course we can do better than that. Say in Christ Jesus. Christ Jesus. I am too loaded. I am, I am too great. I am too, I am too powerful. I am too powerful. For, any box. For any box. No, you are too great. You are loaded. Full of pride. Full of the power of God. Full of potentials. Glory. Hallelujah. There is no box that is big enough to contain you in Christ. Is somebody listen to what I'm talking about? There is no box that is too big for you. You need to get rid of them. Get rid of them. And I want you to lift up your voice. Say, in the name of Jesus, I arise today and I get out of every box of limitation. I get out of it right now. I step out of it. Open your mouth and begin to pray. Tonight I arise in the name of Jesus. Every limitation and boundary, I step out of it. In the name of Jesus. Get out of it. Get out of it. Get out of that box. 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 Get out of that limitation. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Can you shout this at the top of your voice? I remove every self-imposed limitation upon my life, upon my destiny, upon my potential. Every self-imposed limitation I remove you now. Open your mouth and begin to pray right now. Yes, yes. Remove it, remove it, remove it. Every self-imposed limitation upon my dreams, upon my destiny. Yes, upon my potential. I remove it now. I remove it now. I remove it now. I remove it now. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Shout this loud. You box of limitation. Limiting my potentials. Catch fire now. Open your mouth and begin to pray like that. You box of limitation that is limiting my potential. Catch fire. Catch fire. Catch fire. Catch fire. Catch fire now. Catch fire now. Catch fire. In the name of Jesus. 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 In Jesus' mighty name we pray.
I want you to pray this with every strength you have. I unbox today. My dream, my destiny, and my potential. In the name of Jesus. I unbox it now. Open your mouth and begin to pray. Yes, yes, yes. It is time for manifestation. I unbox it now. I unbox my dream. I unbox my destiny. I unbox my potential. It is time for manifestation. I cannot be limited again. I cannot be limited again. No limitation. I operate in the realm of limitless possibility. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In Jesus. Mighty name we pray. Just to pray point more. Now listen to this. Let me share this with you. Uh, some years ago, uh, after the university, I was uh, working on a book. Uh, 12 chapters. And I've written 6 chapters. And then the thought came to me. You know, I said, okay, you're writing a book. Where are you going to get money to print it, to publish it? And I said, that's true. All right. <laughs> uh, I was struggling. All right. Uh, there's no, I don't know anybody that could sponsor it. So you know what I did? I just stopped it there. And then I went to a meeting just like this. And the preacher preached powerfully about attaining your potential. And then I see God was speaking directly to me. And the man said, now God asked you to write a book. And then you are writing it. And then you stop. You know, the word was so accurate, directed at me. And then you stop and you are saying, uh, well, I don't have money. That's why I stopped saying. And the, 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 the man of God said, but have you finished the book? <laughs> and that question stuck with me. And I went to him and said, okay, all right. I don't have the money. That's true. But at the same time, I've not finished the book. So I resume again that night. And you know what? After that, I think I wrote and printed another 15 books. And God just opened the doors for me. And I will never forget that meeting because if I did not respond to what the man of God said that day, of course, I wouldn't have written any book. You understand what I'm talking about? Because I will be stuck there. I was stuck in my mind, all right? I've not finished it. I was already thinking that there's no money to work. Many of all, that, that is what is happening to our potentials. Do you understand what I'm talking about? I want you to shout at the voice at the top of your voice, say, in the name of Jesus, I will attain all my potentials in Christ Jesus. Open your mouth and declare that. I will attain all my potentials. I will attain all my potentials. I will fulfill all my dreams in Christ. In the name of Jesus. I will fulfill all my dreams. I will maximize all my potentials in Christ. Nothing stop me. Nothing limit me. Nothing stop me. Nothing limit me. In the name of Jesus. Thank you Father. And in Jesus mighty name we pray. Lastly I want you to declare and prophesy this. I will not die with any unrealized potential. I will not die with any unfulfilled dream or vision in the name of Jesus. Open your mouth and begin to pray. I will not die with any unrealized potential. I will not die with any dream unfulfilled. In the name, I will fulfill all the dreams. Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. I'm not leaving this war until I fulfill all my potentials. I'm not leaving this war until I attain all my potential in power. I'm not leaving this war until I fulfill all my dreams in power. I'm not leaving this war until I fulfill God's vision for my life. In the name of Jesus, I operate in the realm of limitless possibility. Thank you, Father. We hope you have been challenged, encouraged, and motivated to become more like Christ by today's teaching. If you would like to find out more about Errands of Revival and get additional teachings and materials for your healthy, spiritual growth, visit our website today at www.eradsofrevival.org or if you would like to enroll at our School of Discipleship, visit our website www.theschoolofdiscipleship.org.uk This teaching was made possible by the prayers and generous free will offering, donation, and gifts from partners like you. You are welcome into partnership with us today. For information on how to become a partner, please call one 866 292 9270 or 1-866-703-5572.
or you can email us at info at erasofrevival.org.uk. Thanks for listening.